shortstop, Tim Foley. Batting third, our right fielder, Big Dave Parker. Batting fourth, left fielder, Bill Robinson. Hitting fifth, our team captain, Willie Stargell. Hitting sixth, third baseman, former Cubby, now ours, Bill Madlock. Batting seventh, the catcher, Steve Nicosia. Batting eighth, our second baseman, Phil Garner. And batting ninth, our side arm and pitcher, my buddy, Bruce Keithen. The wind's blowing in today at Wrigley Field, but it doesn't matter, because we got the kind of guys that can hit it out anywhere, whichever way the wind's blowing. <laughs> and that wind will be blowing all kinds of ways. It was blowing in, it was blowing out, now it's blowing back in. And they do have some guys that can hit it, Tony, but they haven't been hitting. They've had one run the last two games, and that was on a bases-loaded walk to Foley, so the Pirates are having a little trouble scoring. There weren't too many people were going to hit uh, McLaughlin yesterday with the way he threw. There's a youngster out in the mound right there. He calls himself Heater. He gave himself the name, so that might mean he's got a pretty good fastball. George Riley, first major league start. He's been in relief a couple of times for the Cubs. And he does have a nice, pleasant wind. In fact, a very brisk wind at his back, which will really keep fly balls in the ballpark, Joe. That it will. And there you see the stats from his uh, Wichita American Association days this year. Three and eight, 6.08. Earned run average, started six games, completed none, relief 32 times, had five saves. Six foot four, he's 200 pounds. He'll be 23 years old, October 6th. Throws, bats left-handed, born and lives in Philadelphia. Graduated from South Philadelphia High School in 1974, playing baseball, basketball, and football. In his senior year, he helped lead the school to Philadelphia City Baseball Championship, winning the title game, his greatest achievement, was pitching four no hitters in a row. Charles, George Michael Riley, nickname Heat, got that in high school. So there you have it, <laughs> because you asked for it. Here's Omar Moreno to lead off against Riley. Moreno having a super year. 286, eight home runs, 66 runs batted in, 72 stolen bases. And there's the strike. Behind the plate, and you heard him right away, Satch Davidson, Paul Pryor's at first, Dave Pallone's at second, and Ed Barco is at third. Buckner has it. Easy out. That might be the key to the Pittsburgh offense, that is keeping that man Moreno off base, because once he's on base, Foley can really maneuver with the bat. Tim Foley, who just signed a multi-year contract, Foley is hitting 277, has one home run, 54 runs batted in, really chokes up on that bat. Outside, ball one. The grass is high on the infield. It's really going to take a shot to get the ball through there. There's not going to be any ground balls get through there, Tony. There's a pretty good view of it. I hope you get an idea of how high it is. It's a pretty true infield. You don't get too many bad hops in this field. In pretty good shape for that outfield, Joe, especially the center fielder, Thompson. He is playing short center field for Foley. That wind blowing in, Foley choked up about, oh, almost 10 inches. He could hit from either end. Fastball misses, three balls and no strikes. As far as the control factor with uh, Riley, he walked five, one intentional in the seven and two-thirds innings in his first two National League games. Wichita, he walked 53 in 74 innings. There's the strike. He averages... Well, that, that average, 53 and 74 innings, would be 6.4 walks per nine innings. You're not going to hang around too long if you're going to walk that many. you got to wonder, because his minor league stats are not that impressive, so I went to Mike Rourke, the pitching coach, why did you bring him up with such unimpressive stats? He said, really, the last month in the minor leagues, he began throwing strikes. And with his lively fastball, the curve, and the straight change, if he keeps the ball down and throws strikes, he can help us. Anaveros can't get it. Foley hustling down the first. Thought he'd come up with the ball, did not make the turn, so Foley is on it first. It's a base hit. Tony, I, I, Foley's given a hit on that, and I'm wondering why. The ball hopped up, and it looked like it hit onto Ferris right in the stomach. He's in front of the ball. There it is. Ball hit right off his bare hand. It was a big hop. He did have to run to his right quite a bit. Foley doesn't run well. He comes up with the ball. He's got him easily, but he gets a hit. Would you score that a hit? 
It looked like a bad hop to me. It did. Did you, you, didn't, you didn't think it was a bad hop, did you? That was one of those kinds of hops yeah. that bounces up. That you, if you're in front of it, you ought to be able to smother it and throw the guy out. Is that the same? I usually protect my infielders. I was going to say. I, got, I don't know about is that. Is that the Tony Kubek I've come to know and love that protects the infielders? <laughs> or is this an imposter? Here is Dave Parker. Parker takes it inside. Ball one. Parker is hitting 297. A good year for most people, but Dave Parker usually leads the league. Remember his great poem, when the leaves turn brown, he'll be wearing the batting crown. Not this year, but he's had a good year. 23 home runs, 89 runs batted in. He's the big guy. He's the franchise. He's got to knock some runs in. They may have him. Whoa, he was leaning. Buckner wants to talk to Riley. I asked Tanner about Riley. I said, what, what do you fellas know about him? He said he comes highly recommended by the scouts. Everybody was high on him. And, you know, there, there'll be some controversy if, if the youngster gets beat. It's, it's not fair, but that's the way it is. They say, well, you should be able to pitch against the other contenders, too. Well, the Cubs don't play Montreal anymore. Ooh. Didn't mean to swing. Russell was the scheduled starter today, but he jammed his heel. And it was pretty sore, so they had to scratch him from the starting uh, rotation. I don't even know if he'll be able to pitch tomorrow against the Pirates. Herman Franks was strapped in St. Louis and got a great game out of Holtzman. He's looking for four tough innings from Riley, and he'll be happy. There goes Foley. Big okay. jump. They're not going to get him. Hit his bat. So what are they going to do? What's he calling him back for? Oh, it hit him. Hit by a, a big piece ball. Of, no stolen base, so... No stolen base. Parker, the ball apparently got just a little bit of him, either his shirt, maybe part of his hand. Foley was on the move. Ordinarily, they don't start runners too often with Parker up. Let's see where it hits him, Joe. I'm anxious that just if that got his shirt. He must have got a string that was hanging. Satch Davidson went into all kinds of theatrics. Uh, that's the old Frank Rossetti, the old Ron Hunt trick. Get a shirt that's about four sizes too big, let it drape out over the plate, let it hit the shirt. Remember when Rose did that against the Red Sox in the World uh -huh. Series? There's the strike to Bill Robinson. Robinson hitting 264, 23 home runs, 69 runs batted in. One man out, no score in the ball game. Top of the first. Well hit the center field. Thompson going back, way back. He's got room. Tagging up is Foley. He's heading for 30. He'll make it. I'd like to see that ball in June, July, or August in this ballpark when the prevailing wind is usually out to left field. Today it is coming straight in off Lake Michigan here on the north side of Chicago. That ball's way out of here. Someday. Someday. Now that flag in left field, as you saw it, kind of blowing a little bit out. The one in center field over the scoreboard, blowing straight in. As Willie Stargio. Here is the glue. This is the guy that makes it happen in that clubhouse. And I'll tell you, that Pittsburgh clubhouse, boy, is animal house with spike shoes. There's a fastball, and it's a good one. It's a strike. Joe, sometimes statistics can be awfully boring. Sometimes, but this is amazing. 381 official at bats. He's got 29 home runs and 73 runs batted in. He is just well. He, I think he's been their most valuable player this Pirate ball club. Foul tip. He's made it happen. When I asked Stargell to describe himself, he almost got poetic. He said, "I like to think of myself as a an oak tree." Strong, big trunk, and a lot of limbs. I don't want to be a one-limb tree. Just a big, soft-spoken, well-liked by everybody. Struck him out. Ooh, good fastball. Good fastball. Stargell is out on strikes. That ends the inning, so Riley gets out of it. Pirates do not score. We go to the bottom half of the first inning. Pittsburgh, nothing. Cubs, nothing. De Jesus, Thompson, and Bittner coming up. I'm Scott Thompson, Chicago Cubs, and this will be manager Herman Frank's lineup for today for the Chicago Cubs. Yvonne De Jesus will lead off and play shortstop for us. Yours truly will play center field and bat second today. Larry Bittner will be batting third and playing right field for us. Dave Kingman, who's having just an outstanding year this whole season, uh, will be playing left field and batting fourth. Billy Buckner will be batting fifth and playing first base for us today. Steve Onaveras will play third base and bat sixth for us today. Barry Foote 
is our catcher, and he'll bat seventh today, and we're looking for Barry to really be the nucleus of this club in the future. Mick Kelleher will play second base and bat eighth for us today, and the young phenom George Riley will pitch and bat ninth for us today. <laughs> the young phenom. Yeah, Scott Thompson, and he spells Scott with one T, as you saw. And here is Keeson. Not a whole lot tricky about Keeson, except he can scare right-handed hitters off the plate with that sidearm curve, a sinker that really bores in to right-handed hitters. He at times has had trouble with left-handed hitters. He's come up with a little bit of a slow curve from about three quarters, which has helped him out. He is not afraid to move hitters off the plate, Joe. No, he's not. The Jesus will lead it off. We do want to, well, we're happy that our friends in North Dakota and Minnesota are with us with this game. Some of you were expecting to see the Minnesota-Milwaukee game. We're having some technical problems. As soon as they're corrected, uh, you'll be seeing the Milwaukee-Minnesota game. Bunted in the air, one out. Keeson is there. Boy, talking about Minnesota. Let's tip our hats to Calvin Griffith and Gene Mock, who have really done a job. I tell you, they have really, really, there are three games out of first place. They've won 80 games, lost 74. And I don't know who would have thought that when it was spring training outside of Gene and Calvin. When you look at the players they've lost in the last few years, starting with Heisel, late Lyman Bostock, Bill Campbell, Rod Carew, amazing that they've held that franchise together. Scott Thompson. Thompson hitting 299, has two home runs, 28 base hits. There's that slow curveball Tony was talking about. Keeson's best pitch is his fastball. He's come up with the slider, and he's come up with the slow curveball. Ah, one ball, one strike. Thompson born in Grove City, Pennsylvania. Lives in Renfrew, Pennsylvania. He's a Pirate fan. Ground ball, Stargell, big hop. Keeson, so there are two away. Stargell just refuses to miss ball games. There have been times this year as he flips the ball to Keeson where Tanner's wanted to get him out of the lineup. The day game following a night game, and Willie says, uh-uh, I'm it for the duration. Playing every ball game, and he's really been, as you said before, an inspiration to this Pirate team, I think, Joe. He's the guy that makes it going at clubhouse. Bittner, a good fastball, and a strike one. Bittner hitting 288, three home runs, 47 runs batted in. Ground ball. Whoa. Garner. What a funny hop. He was there. Three up, three down. We complete one inning of baseball here. It's Pittsburgh nothing. Chicago nothing. And at the top of the second, it'll be Madlock. Nikoshi and Gardner for Pittsburgh. Introducing things denture wear. Well, next Saturday, the final weekend of NBC's regular season coverage, and it leads us right into the league championship. We'll be covering that. Well, where will we be next Saturday? We don't know because we're going to wait until the very last, last minute the way these pennant races are going. I tell you, you just don't know. You look at them, and I'm sure that you looked at your paper today. Pittsburgh, a game behind Montreal right now. Houston, a game and a half behind Cincinnati. The American League, Baltimore, well, the rest of the American League's looking at timetables, but Baltimore, the only one that's cinched. Kansas City, two games out. Minnesota, three. And there's a base hit by Madlock. So check your local listings for our game next week. And then get set for the playoffs of the league championship series. I tell you, it's going to be something, Tom. And we could uh, conceivably have a playoff game for a division title. That's right. Tied. This time, it, I can't remember when three teams or three divisions were this close. We've had two in years past since Commissioner Kuhn conceived the idea of divisional play. Well, this is something. Houston, a game and a half. Pittsburgh, one. Minnesota, three. Kansas City, two behind California. Tanner likes to run. Matlock has 19 stolen bases. Riley appeared to have a pretty good move when Foley was on. He was slow in his delivery to the plate, but he had, did have a good move to, the, to first base, so let's watch. No score. There goes Matlock. Off the glove, on the barrel. Oh, look at that 
Madeline. Look at Madeline. Look at Madeline. Madeline. Covering third. Nobody covering third base. Joe Lynette kept him going, but it was the base running instinct of Madlock. He had to play in front of him on the Barris. But and Riley were congregated on the mound. Third base was open. This is one of those, Joe, with a shortstop to Jesus cover. He lets it go. It's a double play. De Jesus is staying right on the second base bag. Look at Matlock go. He never hesitated. That's a play, too, that the only guy who could cover third would be to catch your foot. It's, it's the same as a bunt play when that third baseman has to come in and you just keep running as a catcher and cover third. But Matlock outraced him, so he's on at third. Nicosia hit the ball hard. Looked like he's going to base hit. Didn't get it. And here's Garner. Garner's hitting 283. Has 10 home runs. Pirates having trouble scoring runs are threatening right here. Look at this. A squeeze Safety. play. They're going to come to the plate. No chance. How do you like that? Safety squeeze. First and third. With Garner up. Tanner trying to stay out of the double play. And. The difference between that suicide and safety, Madlock did not break until he saw the ball was on the ground right there. When the ball hit his bat, he saw it was downward. He broke. No chance for a play as Madlock had crossed home plate standing up. So they take advantage of the rookie, Riley. His only play would have been at first base. I'll tell you, Tanner does not miss a trick. He likes his men to be aggressive on the base pass. He starts a lot of base runners, leaves an awful lot of them on their own where they pick their pitch. Here he goes with the squeeze, and out comes Mike Rourke, the pitching coach. Well, he's going to try to settle a youngster down because he's had a lot, a lot of plays in his one inning. Ball off his glove. They didn't get Nicosia. And then the squeeze play, it's going to rattle you a bit. So all Mike is out there trying to do is settle him down. Donnie Moore has begun throwing for the Cubs. Herman Franks was a little strapped. There's your score. Pirates won, Cubs nothing in the top of the second. But Willie Hernandez, who might have been the choice with a, a veteran starter, but he's had some arm problems, so he couldn't pitch him. And then Russell came up lame. So he ended up going with the youngster, Riley. Home plate umpire, Satch Davidson. It was Paul Pryor who made the play down at uh, the call at first base. Dave Polona's at second base, and Ed Fargo. The umpire at third. Well, it's a base hit for Garner, a base hit for Nicosia. One run is in, and Pittsburgh leading one to nothing. And Keeson is the batter with base runners at first and second. Nobody out. Third baseman on arrows moving in, as is Buckner. They swung away in this situation yesterday, and the ball got chopped by their pitcher Robinson over the head of over the head of the third baseman on I think of all the managers in baseball. Tanner does more unorthodox things, if you want to call that, or things that the book says don't do. He may put the switch on right here and have him hitting. It's a strike. Buckner is right in on top of him. Keeson is not a good hitter as far as average is concerned, but he has hit a grand slam this year. He's got a 164 average. In fact, his lifetime, he's got three home runs, and right now you see him taking a good look at the third base coach, Joe Lonnette. Well, apparently they put a switch on. At least that's the way you'd, you'd look at that that last maneuver. Bunt and foul. One ball, two strikes. His grand slam was at San Diego against Bob Shirley. In 1977, Keeson homered against Espinosa in 78. He homered against Carlton. One-nothing. Pittsburgh out in front. He doesn't know what's going on. There's a runner at second base, Nicosia. Man at first base is Garner, and Keeson wants a little conference with Joe Lynette. Lynette, the third base coach, and Al Monchak, the first base coach, have followed Tanner around about every place he's been. Well, I'll tell you, if, if Herman Franks does retire at the end of the year, Peanuts Lowry will go with them because they've been going as a, an entry. One ball, two strikes. Base runners at first and second. Nobody out. He's going to swing away. Wax and foul. He had to switch off before. Anytime you see a pitcher back out of the batter's box and stare like that, it's because he's getting something besides the bunt sign. You assume that anyhow. Buckner still doesn't believe it at first base. He's in tight. He's charging hard. Riley's going to go to second. Hey, did he get him? He Barry Keller. Keller was there. 
And so Gardner is forced at second. Keeson is on at first, and moving to third is Nicosia. Boy, Phil Gardner really made the play close. With runners on first and second, he had a super jump off first base. Riley does not react off the mound too quickly, and he takes that little shuffle step and just barely gets him. Close call by Dave Pallone. Garner almost beats the play from a different angle. It's Kelleher taking the throw. So there's one out. Pittsburgh out in front, one to nothing. And Omar Moreno, who bounced out to first baseman Bill Buckner, his first time up as a batter. Moreno, who tries to hit from the middle of the diamond towards left field with an inside out swing. Low ball one. The key to his swing, talking to him. Bob Skinner and talking about the theory of Harry Walker's is to drag that left leg and not open up his hips too soon. Left field. Kingman is charging hard. Makes the play. And Kingston. Throw it, Dave. Went around all the way to second base and they got a double play. He thought there were two outs. He just kept on going. Then he retagged, but it was too late. Kingman couldn't pick him up. Finally, Alvarez yelled to him from third base. And they double him up. He's battling the sun. You can see the sun right in his eyes. Now he's looking home, but the runner there, the coach is holding. Finally, Kingman is told as he's from deep shortstop, and he gets Keeson. Keeson it was all the way around <laughs> second base. So that ends at the top of the second inning. Pittsburgh scores a run. It's one nothing. Pittsburgh leading the Cubs. Kingman, Buckner, and Averas coming to bat. The Enoch Rogers, a sorcerer, plots to conquer the earth. His weapon, an army of slave women. Gil Gerard is Buck Rogers, Thursday. Wrigley Field, and following our game, Sports World. USAC dirt car racing, along with World Cup diving. Defending USAC dirt champ, 78 DuCoin winner, Pancho Carter. Bill Vukovic, last year's DuCoin runner-up. And Gary Bettenhausen. That's on Sports World following our game. Didn't mean to swing. Foley makes the grab. And Scott Thompson is the first out. Brings up Larry Bittner. And certainly, I know Tony joins me and all of us at NBC. Our condolences to the family of Gene Kelly. Was the Phillies announcer for so many years when I played there. In fact, we saw Gene the last there in Philadelphia. Gene passed on this week. One of the great guys. Base hit up the middle, so Bittner is on. And that brings up Dave Kingman. This crowd will react to this. the cry of Jack Brickhouse who does the Cub games here. As soon as they hit when he goes, hey, hey. They're the RBI leaders of the National League. I, they tell me they're having trouble with that street out in left field, Waveland Avenue, keeping those street signs out there. People can't change and get to Kingman Avenue. It's happened several times this year. You see them over it, through windows, over buildings. Chase the curveball, missed it. And a strike one. Using one of those hollowed out Bats hollowed out at the end. Big wide stance. Pull foul. It's interesting to watch the contrast in styles between a Kingman who once he gets set holds that bat still and Stargill who pumps it and really primes that bat before he turns it loose. What they try to do with Kingman, Lou Fonseca, one of the fine hitting instructors in baseball has worked with him for several years trying to get him to take a lot of the motion out of his swing. And that long swing and the head was bobbing and he was lunging on his front legs. So he's got him way spread out. To make it more compact. He still has an uppercut, but not as severe. Two strikes. I don't think there's any one way to pitch in. You might try and throw him high and tight one time and Kingman is strong enough that he can muscle that ball out of the plate. You can throw breaking balls a foot outside, and he'll miss it by a foot one time, and then hit it out the next time. 
Well, a word they use in describing a change in Kingman is discipline. He has more discipline in the batter's box. Doesn't chase as many bad balls. Here's a two strike pitch. They're going right after him and he's going to whack him. He wanted that one, didn't he? See him shake his head, head after he fouled it back. One man out, Pittner's at first. Pittsburgh leading one to nothing. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. So I've noticed so far in this ballgame, Keeson has thrown a few more off-speed pitches. And I think with the wind blowing in and Wrigley Field, a pitcher will do that a little more often. He can make a mistake and still stay in the ballpark. Look out. It hit him. So Kingman is on at first and Pittner is on at second. Keeson will do that. He'll hit a lot of guys with that delivery. And I mean, there's no chance for Kingman to get out of the way. He's trying to get the ball inside. It's the same thing they try and do today, Parker. Teams try and pitch Parker high and tight. He gets hit by pitches that way. So Kingman is on at first. Pittner is on at second. One man out. Kingman's not the guy you'd want to come charging after you. Thought you were intentionally <laughs> throwing at him. Did he? No. Oh, mess around with him. Here's Bill Buckner. Buckner popped to the second baseman his first time up. Line drive, right field. Parker near the line is going to get it. He makes the grab. Tagging up is Bittner. He's going to try for third. He'll make it. That was a pretty nice catch by Parker because he had to run a long way out of that corner. And that foul line, well, it's right up against the stand, just a couple of feet to work with. The ball hooking and sinking as it was. Ball was well hit by Buckner. And this is on Tavares. St. Louis and the Mets, a doubleheader. Montreal's at Philadelphia, doubleheader tonight. Cincinnati's in Houston. San Francisco at Atlanta, Los Angeles at San Diego. Two outs, first and third. Outside, ball one. Minnesota, nothing. Milwaukee, nothing. End of one. Erickson against Slayton. Detroit, Boston, rain. Yankees, five. Toronto, one. Gamble, Naren home run. Tian against Edge. Low, two balls. Texas at California, Kansas City at Oakland. Tonight, Cleveland to Baltimore, Chicago at Seattle. Amazing, Joe, what the wind blowing into this park just outfield play. The center fielder Moreno is playing about as short a center field as you'll ever see. And Anaveras has some power. There you see the defense. Shallow and pretty much straight away. 2-0 pitch. It's low, 3-0. Anaveras takes a look now at Joey Malpatano coaching the third. Do they turn him loose? Barry Foote is the on-deck batter. Two outs. Cubs are trailing one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth. There's a Malfitano. I can't believe he's going to let him hit him. It's something he likes. The right-handed hitter coming up next. He Came took it all line. away. The bases are loaded. First time really that the Cubs have had anything going against Keeson. Barry Foote is the batter. Foote bounced out third to first his first time up. Hitting 259, he has 16 home runs. They get a little action at Pittsburgh bullpen now. Line drive, right field, Parker in fast, he's there. He got a good jump he's on that it. ball and made a good play. Ball was well hit. But that ends the inning, so at the end of four, the score here is Pittsburgh one, Chicago nothing. And for Pittsburgh, it'll be Garner, Keeson, and Moreno. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking lot beer from Miller. See, Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's mental discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. Oh, no, this yeah, is no, wait, well, this this is what you big Wait a minute. Light like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and hey, less. I didn't feel my label. Usually... I go. Now, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. 
any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Phil Gardner leads it off, a 1-0 ball game here. Tony, it's a beauty. Gardner, Keith, and Moreno, in the fourth inning, Riley started getting hit a little bit hard. Madlock lined out, Nikosha lined out. Stargell hit a fly ball deep to left field. The wind kept it in. So the second or third time around for this rookie pitcher's first major league start. Second or third time through the line. Off the kneecap of Riley. So Garner's on, leading off the fifth for the Pirates. Starting to get a little bit too Riley. Now the trainer Garofalo will come out. I tell you, the youngsters had a little bit of a baptism in that second inning when the Pittsburgh club scored their run. It was a ball off his glove, hit by Nikosian, and it was a bunt by Gardner where he actually slipped and fell. Another ball was hit up the middle. And this one really got him, got him right on the shin, but it can't hurt too much in your first major league game. But of course, what they're worried about is that if he does have some pain, that he'll try to compensate for that pain, and maybe hurt the other leg or pull a muscle. Mike Rourke is out there. He's the pitching coach. Looks pretty sore. You don't want to take a chance. Again, it's the old story of all-star game Dizzy Dean. Played Dizzy Dean where he got hit by the line drive. They thought he came back too soon and never pitched well again. Here it is, Joe. It's right back up the middle. He doesn't get the glove down at all. It is right off his shin. Herman Franks has started a pitcher down throwing in the bullpen as Riley takes a few tosses to see if he's all right. It's a one another game here at Wrigley Field Chicago. The Pirates lead. There's Donnie Moore, who's up one other time in this ball game. They were hoping to get a good 0-4-5, maybe six innings off Riley, and then they can come with Tidrow, and then they got the man with the most unhittable pitch in baseball, Bruce Souter, if they've got a lead. It's about what Herman was saying. Roy continues to talk to young Riley. This is the best bullpen in baseball as far as the ball players are concerned. It's away from the dugout. The manager can hardly see you. It's close to the stands where the fans can feed you. So this is a good, this is a real good dug, uh, bullpen. Bruce Keeson. Out of Aris will move in tight looking for a bunt. Stargell will charge. Riley will be coming in. Chuck Tanner. Here comes Riley's pitch. Now he's going to first base. Trying to see if Keaton will tip something off. He didn't. I was watching his bat. He didn't move at all, did he? Nope. Last time up, Tanner put the switch on a couple of times. Whoa. Boy, he, he threw that flat footed, Tony. He never, he was off the mound and just flipped it, and he had something on it. What you got to do in order to make that kind of throw is he is stepping off with his back foot off the rubber first. You couldn't just stand there with your foot on the rubber and throw over. It'd be a ball. But he stepped off first and then flipped over. Garner's got a pretty good lead. Pop foul, one strike. We're in the fifth. Joe Garziola, Tony Kubek from Wrigley Field, Chicago, with the Pirates leading over the Cubs, one to nothing. I mentioned earlier, this youngster has a good move, but he's got a slow delivery to the plate. He, he kicks that leg up there, and that's where they're picking up the steps. There's some of the great base dealers, Maury Wills will tell you, that if the pitcher's looking at you at first base, he's going home. Here's a bunt by Keeson. Riley will go to first base. You can hear Barry Foot all the way up here directing traffic, telling him where to throw, Joe. He did a good job screaming. Now he's going to settle him down because he had a lot of time. He hurried to play. Now Keeson's bunt is a good one, and Foot immediately hollers first base, first base. But the youngster, he didn't take any time at all. He fired. He had plenty of time, almost threw it away. That just comes with experience. Hey, it's his first major league game, and I tell you, a first major league start, rather. So he has done a super job, and if he's still got a few butterflies hanging around, you can understand that. Omar Moreno with Garner down at second base, one out. Moreno has flied out, and then Keeson was doubled up on first base in the second inning. Tries to butt it, one strike. Moreno, it's incredible, I think, with his speed, has only two bunt base hits all season long. The last time in California, when Rod, or when Rod Carew, rather, was, was injured, he came out to Dodger Stadium, and Skinner asked Carew to work with Moreno on his bunting. He gave him a few, he thinks, valuable tips that he can work on in winter ball and next spring training. Garner's at second. 
One ball, one strike, one out. Moreno, the hitter, facing Riley. Good curveball. A little bit up in the strike zone, but it looked like it was a real sharp breaking curve. One ball, two strikes. Outfield, left and center, playing fairly shallow for Moreno. You can see Garner taking a peek to see where Thompson is, looking over his shoulder. Garner, an excellent base runner. Lower right hand corner of your screen. Fouled off by Moreno. They're watching this youngster closely because that Cub bullpen, they got a couple of them going now. Left hander and right hander throwing for the Cubs. Geisel and Moore. Look out. Did it get him? Yes, it did. So Riley. It's Moreno, they're on first and second now with one out. Foley will be the hitter. Riley hit Parker back in the first inning. Kingman has been hit. It's going to be a real race if Foley does get the base hit because they're playing so shallow. Foley, who can get that bat on the ball, I think he's only got about 14 strikeouts in 126 games, what I looked at. Cubs defense looking for the double play. One ball to Foley. Now Foley's going to have a little talk with Dave Parker. He's going to get the pine tar rag. I think it's interesting. Those two guys right there, when Foley joined this ball, park, ball club, Parker went up to him the first day in the clubhouse and said, listen, we know of your reputation. You've been a hothead. You try to manage. We want you to do one thing, and that's what you're here for. You play shortstop. Let Tanner manage. You play your position, you'll be valuable to us. So Parker straightened them out. There are the two base runners, Garner at second, Moreno at first. One ball to count on Foley. One and one. The outfield, very shallow for Tim Foley. Garner would have to get a good jump to see the defensive alignment. One ball, two strikes. I don't think he can score on a base hit. I'll tell you, if it's right at those guys or just off to their side, it's going to be tough. Garner at second base. Pirates lead one to nothing. We're in the fifth. There's Moreno down at first. Any ground ball, he'll tear somebody up at second base. Little looper, two strikes. Base hit. Garner is being sent by Lynette. Here comes Thompson's throw. He is safe at home. Two to nothing, Pittsburgh. I got a question the way Scott Thompson charged that ball. He waited for the ball to get to him. Watch the replay. Now he hits the ball up the middle. Right there. Four steps. It's interesting. Before the ball game, I was talking to Cookie Rojas. Here he is again, Thompson. He caught that ball, almost went through his leg. He yep. just barely got his glove down in time. Rojas was saying that Thompson probably should be a right fielder, but he was talking about how well he does charge the ball. He said his arm is not overly strong for an outfielder, but he said he charges the ball well, like a shortstop. At that time, he got a little handcuffed. Now, Herman Frank's out to the mound. He's going to make a change. Riley will leave. And Dave Geisel has come in. There's your score in the top of the fifth. Pirates to the Cubs, nothing. That address again for your tax deductible contribution to help our American Olympic athletes, U.S. Olympics, Post Office Box 1980N, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, zip code 02118. So Dave Geisel has come on to relieve Heat Riley. Two men are on base. There's one out. The Pirates lead two to nothing. And he'll have to face Dave Parker. Geisel was with Wichita this season. He's pitched twice in relief for the Cubs this year. No runs in four innings. He's also with the Cubs part of last season. Check swing. Foul right to the Cubs dugout by Parker. One strike. 
You know, before the game, we alluded to it earlier, Herman Franks was talking about his pitch, and he said, if I can just get three innings out of young Riley, I'll be happy because I can bring in Geisel and then Tidrow and then close it with Suter. So that's the way he was thinking. They're really short as far as pitching, and nobody can really get on the youngster because he did a great job, Riley. Leaves the game trailing two to nothing, true, but he pitched strong. Moreno with a big lead off second base trying to rattle Geisel. De Jesus keeps creeping back trying to keep him close. Top hard slider. Do you get a piece of it? Yep. He fouled the ball so the runners will go back. Two strikes on Parker. Parker's been hit by a pitch and he's lined hard to center field. Now Ed Vargas is saying, no, you go back. So Moreno will be set back to second base. 0-2. Geisel with Wichita this year, five wins, five losses. A good ERA, about two and a half with seven saves. Used almost in each case in relief. So Geisel's way ahead of Parker, 0 2. Fouled off. I'll say one thing about Parker he does not give one inch to a left handed pitcher. He just hangs in there. He has that closed stance, a little bit pigeon toed, and he cocks that bat behind his left ear. There's Moreno at second. Foley's at first. One out, two strikes on Parker. Ground ball, De Jesus. Will only get the force out at second base as Parker beats the throw. The ball is thrown away by Kelleher, and Buckner did not block it. Keller will get charged with an error as Moreno comes home with a third pirate run. Foley really put the pressure on Mick Keller. There was no chance for a throw, but Keller threw it anyway. With Parker's speed, they weren't going to get him at first base. Foley pressures Keller. Here comes the bounce. Buckner had a chance to save a run if he had blocked the ball. He tried to scoop it. The air will go to Keller. That's one Pirates of three, Cubs nothing. That's one of those aggressive errors that they just... They're they're too expensive. You just can't make that kind of play. As you say, Parker was not going to be doubled up. Kelleher should have just held the ball. Out Bill Robinson, 0 for 2 in the game with Parker at first. Al Monchak, first base coach. Tony, do infielders ever remind each other, I mean, you know, who's running? Do you say, hey, it's going to be tough to get a double play on the night that? It's something that Casey Stengel taught so well. He taught base running well. He taught defensive play well in the infield. He always told you to think ahead before the play happens. What's the situation? How many outs? Who the base runner is? Who the hitter is? So you had it in your mind, so you didn't you could make a snap judgment. It's too late once you get your hands on the ball if you haven't thought it out beforehand. So you've got to believe that Kelleher just didn't did, did not think it out because with Parker running, he would not have thrown the ball. I would think so. Of course, a lot of times you think a guy hits the ball to that side, you feel, well, maybe he didn't get a good jump out of the box, too. Hit deep, but pulled foul by Robinson. And there's always the remote chance a guy can slip and fall out of the batter's box. He breaks stride too soon on the way down. So Keller let the ball go, but it didn't, wasn't worth it this time. Three to nothing. Pirates over the Cubs, top of the fifth. Geisel on to relieve. Riley. Keeson. He's shutting the Cubs out to this stage. Two outs for Wrigley Field, Chicago. Good background for the hitters, as you can see. There goes Parker, ground ball, De Jesus. We go to first. Buckner gets Robinson, but the Pirates come up with a couple more runs as we go to the last of the fifth here in Wrigley Field, Chicago. The Pirates lead three to nothing. Coming up, it'll be Kelleher, Geisel scheduled, and De Jesus. Hey, Mike. If you play football the way you shave, this team's in a lot of trouble. It's not my fault, Brad, so my electric razor doesn't do such a great job. Maybe it's not your razor. Maybe it's your face. Huh? That's right. Your beard is just laying there. Make it stand up with Williams Electric Shave. Electric Shave has set that beard up where you can get a close, clean shave and have a lot less irritation. Make your beard stand up. Make your razor shave better. With Electric Shave. You learn pretty fast for a football player. Electric Shave! Next Saturday, final weekend of NBC's regular season coverage leading into the League Championship Series. We'll be covering that here at NBC. Pre-game show start at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Where are we going to be? Well, whatever game means most of the pennant races. As you know, we've got three good pennant races going. Baltimore virtually having the Eastern Division of American League racked up. So I want to remind you, next week, 
Saturday, 2 Eastern Daylight Time for NBC's Game of the Week. Fifth inning. Callaher. Geisel is scheduled, but we probably will see a pinch hitter. And then De Jesus. Tony, talk about that league championship series the next Tuesday night. The first one is at night. So, and we'll be covering it. Got a pinch hitter. That's Steve Macko, who is in the on-deck circle with a leaded bat. Getting loosened up. Callaher will lead it off, and then Macko will pinch hit for Geisel. Bruce Keeson. Riding a three to nothing shutout, going into the bottom of the fifth. He's allowed just two cub hits. Callaher an infield hit. Bittner with a clean single to center field. One ball to Callaher. Second base has been somewhat of a trouble spot for the Cubs. Of course, that trio who is an excellent second baseman. He was sent over to the Phillies in a trade by Bob Kennedy. A good trade, incidentally. Got a few regulars. Martin Foote. Ted Sizemore. Sizemore has since gone. Dillard played well for a while at second. Now they're using Kelleher. One ball, two strikes on Mick Kelleher. Two and two. Sats Davidson behind the plate. Ground ball. Garner ranges nicely to his left over to Stargell. They get Keller. Nice play by Garner. He really showed a lot of range on that play. Garner, who has had a, just a super year, here's the replay on it. One hand grab. I'll tell you, these Pirates are very deep in infielders. They've got Garner at second. They've got Foley at short. Stennett, who was hardly played, and Dale Barra. There's Garner. He, of course, played on some pretty good Oakland A's teams. This infield, Joe, does not have a lot of speed and quickness with the Garners and with Foley and with Madlock and Stargell, but I think they all know how to play. They know how to position themselves. Tanner keeps very sophisticated charts. Here's Mack, who takes the first pitch from Keeson. Pops it to short left. Robinson waves off. Foley, he's got it. Macko played most of this year. Wichita. Didn't spend much time up at the plate against Keeson. So there are two outs. Game really moving along quickly. Now it'll be De Jesus. De Jesus at one time the property of the Los Angeles Dodgers. In fact, for a while there, it looked like he got lost in their farm system. Since he's had a chance to play, he's become a pretty steady 280 hitter. Stolen 20 bases or more this year, last year. Fields his position well. Boy, he's around the plate. One strike to De Jesus. Two outs. Pirates lead three to nothing over the Cubs. Fouled off by De Jesus. 0-2. Donnie Moore continues to throw in the Cubs' bullpen, so he will probably replace Geisel. Donnie Moore. Keeson has pitched a strong game, allowed just two base hits. He's walked to ground ball, third but foul. Let's see, Keeson has walked one, two, Strikeouts. He hasn't struck anybody out yet. Two strikes in De Jesus with two outs. Pirates lead three to nothing. De Jesus gets on. It'll be Scott Thompson. Do you get the impression when you're in uh, Herman Frank's office that he will come back? He's very non-committal about it. I know. It's it's a mixed feeling that I have. I think he wants out of here. Do you? Yeah. Uh, too high. Ball and two strikes to De Jesus. So you think he will manage, but not here. There have been a lot of rumors. They've said that Amalfitano may take the job over. Rourke may take the job over. There's Herman. That's Rourke right in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Outside, two and two. Some have said Alvin Dark. I don't think Alvin will get the job. Man right there took Willie Mays. 
under his uh, well, financial security or blanket, call it what you want. And I guess he's made Willie a couple dollars, same as he's made himself. Fouled out of play by Day. Who's two, two, two out? I just got the feeling, just listening to the, the rapport with the players coming in, Barry Foot and Kingman, they were kneeling and all that. He'd miss all that. He really would. But but I think he wants to go. He wants to win. There's the other side of the field. Chuck Tanner, man with the glasses, Harvey Haddocks. Pitching coach for the Pirates. Fly ball by De Jesus. The glasses down by Moreno. Now the wind pushes it back to the infield. Basket catch. Three up, three down for Keeson. Another easy inning. He's breezing in a shutout two-hitter. We'll go to the sixth here in Wrigley Field, Chicago, with the Pirates leading over the Cubs three to nothing. Now the trick is in just three moves to get the light bottle caps all together moving two each time. Once, twice, three. What? That's easy. Hey, I could put away a lot of beer by the time they figure this one out. That's why I'm drinking light beer for most. Not only does light taste great, but it's got a third less calories than their regular beer. And it's less filling. Hey, what's going on here? Okay, once more. One, two, three. What? That's easy. Let me in. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Right guard, no. I want to remind you that beginning October 2nd, that's Tuesday, Tuesday night, National League Championship Series will start. That will start in the National League's Western Division. NBC will be there. Another reminder to you, in case you've missed it, it was shown before on Saturday mornings, a new show introduced by NBC, Time Out. Something new in children's programming. The series called Time Out deals with physical fitness and health through sports. It will air various times, so check your listing among the various Saturday programs. Some pretty good host for that. Sports personalities, Bruce Jenner, Donna Verona, Merlin Olson, Mike Adamley, John Neighbor, other celebrities, Gary Coleman. A few chuckles out of him, Kyle Rowe Jr. Here's Stargell facing Donnie Moore. Base set by Stargell to the right of Kelleher, so he leads it off for the Pirates. They lead three to nothing. Stargell had struck out, and he fly to left. The wind held the ball in the park, but he's on, leading off the sixth. He gets a good cut at it, tail in the way, but he was still able to muscle it up the middle. That ball was down and away, but against a guy like Stargell, he is just strong. I got a hunch he's hap happy to see a pitcher he's seen something of before off Riley. He hadn't seen him. Now Madlock up, Anavera's creeping in, but Tanner's going to hit away. One ball with Stargell at first. Buckner is not holding Stargell close. He's playing behind him down at first base. Stargell will get a little bit better lead. Fouled off, out of play. One ball, one strike from Madlock. Madlock, and there are not too many of them in baseball, who has a lifetime batting average over 300. Some of the Cubs this morning were a little upset with him because there were some statements made in the paper. Madlock was supposed to have said, there's Donnie Moore's record, supposed to have said that the Cubs choke up in August and September. Madlock was looking for the writer that printed it. He said, because I didn't say that. He said, I knew when I was here in a Cubs uniform, we did. Sometimes their pitching staff got wore out. And a lot of people, I don't know if it's an excuse or not, say that day baseball in Chicago in the heat wears them out. That's why they play badly in September. One ball, two strikes. There's your score. Pirates three, Cubs nothing. Stargell's at first. Madlock, one ball, two strike count. Facing Donnie Moore, the third Cubs pitcher. He broke his bat. Kelleher with a quick throw. Not in time to get Stargell. One out. Looked like that ball was going to be right up the middle in the center field for a base hit and just died. You can see Kelleher making that motion and it's just like a sinker ball, like a screwball. He thought it was in center field, too. He was halfway turned and watched it go into center field. He really sawed him off. Now it'll bring up Nikosha with one down. Moore has been in 37 ball games, all in relief for the Cubs. And one save, one win, three loss record. Sit down for a brief period this season. Good moving fastball, way up and in, one ball. Minnesota leading Milwaukee, four to one, bottom of the fourth. Tell you, just finished ball game. Landro came from California, two run home run, then Weiniger won it in the ninth for Gene Mock. Or something. 
One ball, one strike, one out. This pirate ball club does not miss a whole lot of signs, they tell me. I was talking to Lonette. He said, no, we're pretty good. So the guys picked the signs up. He said, maybe one of the reasons is Chuck Tanner insists on using very simple signs. They try and confuse it. He said, I don't stand down at third base and give a whole bunch of signs and takeoffs and indicators. Although he's doing it right now. Of all decoys. One ball, two strikes. Tarzan with a big lead off first. Could be trouble in the right field corner. It's foul. Really strikes foul. I think one of the most overrated things in baseball, as we look at Stargell go back, is this whole thing of signs and looking for him and stealing signs. Managers I know that I played for, they all look and see what he's doing. What possibly could be happened with Stargell who's not that fast a runner and two strikes on Nicosia, and yet Lonette looked like a referee giving uh, hand signals all over the place. But you never know with Tanner. Even with Stargell and Buckner's not holding him out, he might start him. Tanner does unorthodox things. He's holding, fouled off. You know, they've got a guy on that Cubs bench, in fact, a couple of them, but might be as good as anybody in baseball at stealing signs, and that's Peanut Slory. We showed him a while ago. Cookie Rojas is also very good. There's Tanner. He prides himself. In fact, he's come out and told us a couple of times that we've got almost every sign of every manager in this league. Ball, two strikes. Fouled off. Right back over our head. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever talked to a manager right. in either league who <laughs> didn't say he had everybody else's sign? Well, we had Sparky Anderson out earlier this year. He said the same thing. I've got everybody's sign. As we went around the league, a bunch of managers told us that Sparky didn't have our sign. He right. was putting you on. There's Stargell. He led the sixth off with a single. Mad Madlock popped up. Now it's Nikosha facing Donnie Moore. One ball, two strikes. Nikosha hanging tough. Two and two. I remember the late Pepper Martin when he was manager Sacramento. He had signs printed. It said front. <laughs> oh, he did. Down. And he just held it up. Nobody believed him. <laughs> you could read them. Nikosha really giving Donnie Moore a battle. He runs the count three and two with one out. Now let's see if Stargell will be on the move. Nikosha has single and he's lined to left field. There's Joe Lynette, third base coach. Buckner still behind Stargell. He's going. Ground ball. Keller was covering, but they still get the force out. Nice play by Keller. Great pivot by DeJesus, and they turn the double play with Stargell really bearing down hard. Good. Finally executed a double play by Keller and DeJesus. So we'll go to the last of the sixth as we review this double play. Watch Stargell. He doesn't know which way to go. He almost came in standing up, which can be dangerous. Nice pivot by DeJesus. So the score going to the last of the six. Pittsburgh three, the Cubs nothing. Take a look at that double play again. Uh, Kelleher gives DeJesus that ball in good shape, and Stargell really is frustrated. It's an easy double play once DeJesus gets by. And with that camera angle that we had, here it is again. Now, DeJesus is out of the way, and look at Stargell. He, he's, he's really frustrated. Well, he didn't think that Keller would try for the double play. So we certainly want to congratulate our producers, George Finkel and Harry Coyle, our director, and our birthday boy, Mario Chulo. I had to get that in for old Mario, who is 27 years old today. We tried to fly Frank Sinatra in to sing happy birthday to Mario, but he couldn't make it today. I'd yep. ask Joe, but he's the only Italian I know who doesn't have a good voice. <laughs> Thompson, Bettner, Kingman to face Keeson. Keeson with a two-hitter. Boy, if free plays have done one thing, Tony, and shots like that, that kind of coverage really shows it, the agility of the infielders getting out of the way. De Jesus was out of there before Stargell knew what happened. It's not so bad for shortstop because everything's in front of you, but that second baseman where a guy's running up your back you can really get tore up. Scott Thompson, changeup by Keeson. Madlock's going to have to hurry with the wind blowing in. Here comes Bill. Makes a nice catch. Nice catch by Bill Madlock with the wind and the sun and Robinson charging in from left. And two other factors. Madlock had to worry about that bullpen. Now watch. There's Robinson. And up to tarp he goes. Nice play by Bill Madlock. 
had to worry about home plate there. Boy, I don't know how they avoided a collision, but both very agile. Give me an idea how this Pirate Ball Club is hustling. Tanner had a meeting about a week ago. He said, newspapers, everybody's going to be talking about the intense pressure. He said, all I want you to do is go out and have some fun, play as hard as you can. You make some mistakes running the base or defensively forget it as long as you're hustling. Line drive to left field by Bittner. But right at Robinson. Two outs very quickly for Bruce Keeson. To bring up Dave Kingman, a walk and hit by pitch. The Major League home run leader with 47. We told you earlier that he needs three for 50. There have only been six National Leaguers who've hit 50 or home, more home runs in a season. Let me check that with Alan. Is that right, Alan? Kingman hits this one high in the air. Foley with the glasses down. He lost it for a second, but he battled the sun and it finally came out. So Keaston with an easy inning. Three up, three down. Once again, we'll go to the seventh with the score. The Pirates three, the Cubs nothing, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. They killed his wife. They killed his child. And now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw. Josie Wales, first time on TV, Sunday. Joe Garciola with Tony Kubek here at Wrigley Field. And there's that last play again. Tony, he's really battling it. Now you can see Bill Robinson, too, coming to help out if he needed it. He didn't have that ball for sure all the way, Joe, and it finally came out of the sun. And high sky didn't help him. Here's Garner. It's low, ball one. Pittsburgh, three. Cubs, nothing. We're in the seventh inning. One run in the second inning and two in the fifth for Pittsburgh. Pulls it foul. At second inning, Madlock got a single. Nikosha hit one off the glove of the pitcher, Riley. He was safe at first. Nobody covered third. Madlock went all the way to third, and he scored on a bunt by Gardner and got a base hit out of it. One ball and one strike now on Gardner, who is two for two. De Jesus backs up. Good arm. Long throw in time. Gardner is out. In that fifth inning, when they scored two runs, Gardner, a base hit off the leg of the pitcher Riley. Sacrificed by Keeson. Moreno was hit by a pitch ball. Base hit by Foley. And then Parker hit into a force out. Kelleher threw the ball away, and Pittsburgh had the third run in the ball game. That's the way we stand. Keeson getting to a force play. Ball one. The strength of this Pirate pitching staff has been its bullpen with Jackson, DeCalvi, and Romo. The starting pitching has been a little bit erratic, although Keeson's pitching a brilliant game today, Joe. D did Tanner say to you that he is definitely pitching uh, Doc Callis tomorrow, or did you know? Interesting. Two balls and no strikes on Keeson because he said he wasn't sure he was going to talk to Harvey Haddix. He thought he'd start him tomorrow. And I said, listen, knowing Doc Ellis, the way as outgoing as he is, he'd love the pressure and the spotlight of going against Montreal. He said hey, he was thinking about pitching maybe Ellis against Montreal when he go back to Pittsburgh. Say one thing, there's Tanner. Ellis will keep you close in the ball game for about six innings with that slider and sinker. 2-1 pitch to Keeson. <laughs> Self-defense. It's two balls and two strikes. If I were the manager, I think I would pitch him against Montreal. Watch this swing. That's what they call a funky hack. <laughs> That's what you call great arm extension. I shouldn't make fun of pitcher swings. I, we took swings like that too many times. Three balls, two strikes now. Well, I tell you, it's going to be some finish. Three of the divisions. De Jesus backs up. Long throw in time. That was a beautiful play. The more you see of him, the more he impresses you. And I remember a comment that David Concepcion made, oh, about two weeks ago in a post-game interview. He said, it took me 10 years to get recognition. I really got to believe, Joe, that the Latin players, because of the communication problem at times, they don't get interviewed much. They have to perform a lot longer and a little bit better to get the recognition the white guy gets. He's a good little player, offensively, defensively. 
He made a good play there to Jesus, and here's Omar Moreno. Moreno hit by a pitch ball his last time up. Scored. Ball one. The Hayes has led the National League shortstop in assists in each of the last two seasons, talking about the statistics. 1-0 pitch, Donnie Moore against Moreno. Good fastball, caught the outside corner, one ball, one strike. Nothing. Pirates are leading. Ah, two balls and one strike. We're still pretty hard. George Riley started. Geisel and now more. That's high. Three and one. And if Moreno gets on, look out. Merry go round will start. Pirate bullpen busy. Ball four. Moreno is on, and Moreno has stolen 72 bases. He leads the National League in stolen bases, and also times at bat. He went into this game with 651 times at bat. And there's the stolen base leaders chart. Billy North, 55. Lopes, 44. Tavares, 41. Tony Scott, 36. Here's an ideal man to have hit behind him, a guy that can take a couple strikes so he gets in scoring position. And he can also, at times, if you throw him that fastball right down the middle, he can jump on you. Moreno really has a lead. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Draws a throw to Donnie. Oh, what a, what a pickoff move by Donnie Moore. Hey, Moreno it. was leading to come back. Moore really snapped the throw. You can see Moore, Moreno leading. Good quick tag with the glove by Buckner. Good call by first base umpire Paul Pryor. So that ends the inning. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. It's Richburg 3, Chicago nothing. It'll be Buckner on the Maris and foot for the Chicago Cubs in the bottom of the seventh. Buckner leads it up for the Chicago Cubs. And tomorrow, NFL football. I'll tell you, the best thing to do is at 12.30 Eastern time, just turn on NFL 79 and Mike Adamley and Brian Gumbel will come on and give you updates and take a pretty good look at O.J. Simpson at home. And then just stay with the football. Look at that schedule. San Diego and New England, Houston and Cincinnati, Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Mark Chabrota trying to break out of it over there. Jets at Buffalo. Oakland's at Kansas City, 130. That'll be a dandy. There's a lot of always bad blood there. Seattle at Denver a few points scored. So 12.30 Eastern time, NFL 79, and a big afternoon of football. And following our game today, Sports World. Diving and USAC dirt car race. Next Saturday, baseball, we don't know where we'll be. Right now, we're in Wrigley Field as Buckner takes it high, ball one, and let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. WTRF Television, Channel 7, Wheeling. Curveball is a beauty. One ball, one strike. The thing about Keith, he has not been behind too many Cubs hitters today. Pitching a very strong game. He is allowed just two base hits. That's fouled out of play. Kelleher had an infield hit in that third inning and then a base hit by Bittner in the fourth. Doug Capilla begins to throw for the Cubs. Keeson has only two complete games and 22 starts this year. Looks very strong. Here in the bottom of the seventh, he's leading three to nothing, a two hitter. Left field. Robinson going back. That one to left, that Kingman started back. He hits it out with the bleacher bum drain. 
And he didn't look like he swung hard at all at that ball. Tomahawk, the ball was high and outside. He tomahawked, the ball just kept on carrying. Wind still blowing just about straight in, but Buck gets him on the scoreboard. Watch this tomahawk job. That's a ball, wasn't it? Looked like it was out in the strike zone, both wide and high, and Buckner hits his 14th home run of the year. He it's can't a, believe it. It's a three to one ball game as he goes into the bench. Hot shot. Gardner knocks it down. Throw to first. In time. Mount Tavares is out. Nice play. Gardner hung tough. There are the stars at the top of the cap for Gardner. Ball sneaks away, but he has the composure, knows he's got plenty of time in Ontiveros. Those stars were started by Willie Stargell. Gary Shiola got one one time this season just for showing up. <laughs> Every time you make a good play, good base running, he's the judge, the jury, Stargell, and he hangs one on you. So there's one out, one run in, very foot. Foot hit the ball hard his last time up, line hard to right. Ball one, Keeson who usually strikes out five or six. His average is six. He's not struck out a man today. There's the strike. One ball and one strike. One out. One run in. Three to one. Pittsburgh leading the Cubs. Montreal, a twinighter tonight in Philadelphia. Listen to the crowd. T-shirt day here, and these Cub fans, they love their Cubbies. A little bitty ballpark. They're going to draw over a million and a half this year, about a million six, I believe. Going to go to a million six. That's right. One two pitch. Pull foul. He really hit that ball hard. Kisa now is showing some signs of getting pitches up. The one to Buckner that he tomahawked, that was a breaking ball up and in. That foot jumped down. I'll tell you what, Tanner does not fear going to his bullpen in a hurry. He's got two guys warming up right now that can make you pretty smart in the clutch, I'll tell you. One two pitch. Low, two balls and two strikes. Hired bullpen is busy. Cub bullpen is busy. And Keeson is as busy as anybody. Tacalvi is the right-hander, the left-hander is Jackson, and at Tacalvi, well, either one of them, they wouldn't be near where they are. As we look at Tanner, without those two guys. 2-2 two -two pitch. It is fast. Joe, that uh, pirate bullpen, the, the threesome down there, we just showed two of them, Tacalvi and Jackson, with Romo, they're gonna be in over 200 ball games this year. Like Tacovi was saying three years ago, he and Gossage set the club record. They tied for 72 appearances for a pitcher. He said all three of them are going to break that record this year. Of course, Tacovi broke it last year with 91 appearances. Out right of that bullpen, they've got 35 wins. Two two pitch. Full foul once again. There's three guys at 238 appearances. Colby, Jackson, and Romo. That's a lot of appearances. Cool. I tell you, they're going to be going down the stretch here, going hard. But the best in the business, or about the best, is the guy in the Cubs bullpen. That's Bruce Souter. A lot of if good If it ones. gets close. Oh, yeah. Fingers and Lyle's been so good. But it's out on strikes. So there are two away, and there's the first strikeout for Bruce Keeson here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Kelleher is the batter. Top of the sixth, the Minnesota Twins lead five to one over the Milwaukee Brewers. And they're still in it in that division, Western Division. Yes, sir. Base hit. Capella. Foley in for a conference now with Keeson. 
Tanner, I gotta believe he's gonna make the move. He's popped out of the dugout now, Joe. And usually when he comes out of that dugout, he is gonna make the change. It'll be to Culvey. To Hill. Culvey, as we look at Mike Vale, he's already indicated to the first base umpire, Paul Pryor. So to Culvey is coming in. Keeson will be leaving. It's a three to one ball game here. But now the tying run is at the plate. And Vale's gonna be leaving too. I don't know if they really announced Vale as the pinch hitter. Did they announce him? Was he put officially in the ball game? I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it announced, so he may not officially been put in. Usually a manager will go out, he will wait till the announcement is made and then call for Tacoli. But he went to him right away, and then Herman Franks pulled Vale off and put Henderson, who's a switch hitter, up in the on deck circle. So we've got a break in the action here. Tacoli comes on. It's Pittsburgh three, Cubs one. High runners at the plate, and we'll be right back after these messages. Our Buck Rogers, a sorcerer, plots to conquer the earth. His weapon, an army of slave women. Gil Gerard is Buck Rogers, Thursday. So Kent Tacovey in relief. Tacovey, 88 games. Tops in the National League. He led 78 with 91. A real sidearm underhand slinger. 10 and 8 is his one and loss record. 2.63 earned run average. 28 saves. He's second to Bruce Suter of the Cubs, who has 37. Call him the blade, and all he's got to do is look at him. About six, four, or five. He, well, he started off the season in spring training 175 pounds. He's now down to 155. Jim Murray of the Los Angeles Times did a great column on him. Said he could hide behind a rake. <laughs> <laughs> that is really thin. So we've got Mickey Kelleher at second base. Henderson, Ken Henderson is a pinch hitter. Henderson hitting 244, two home runs and 10 RBIs. Three to one, tying run at the plate, two men out, bottom of the seventh. Outside, ball one. There's Kelleher at second base. He doubled. Out. Tell you one thing, Joey Malfatano, I think, spotted it sooner than Kelleher because Malfatano was jumping up and down his third base coaching box. Tendency for a guy at second base, you drift off, you start, there's a Malfatano, you start looking at the catcher's signs. 1 0 pitch to Henderson, the pinch hitter. Out of play, one ball, one strike. Henderson batting for more. You've heard that. There's Keller going back. You've heard that pitching theory many times. Pitch high and tight, low and away. So Colby says, not me. He said, I'm low and tight, low and away. He said, I get a ball above the belt in the strikes when I'm in trouble. A submariner. Misses. Two balls in one strike. Two outs. Kelleher on at second base. Montreal play a twi-nighter against Philadelphia. Cincinnati and Houston are going at it. Bouncing ball, Stargell at first. He's going to take it himself. He does. And so Tacovey comes in, gets the job done. Cubs score a run, a home run by Buckner at the end of seven. It's Pittsburgh three, Chicago one. And for Pittsburgh in the eighth, Foley, Parker, and Robinson. Dick Tidrow is a new pitcher as you look at those flags at top Wrigley Field here. Tidrow, who has really been a workhorse, his 60th game, all in relief. He's 11 and 4, a 2.44 earned run average with four saves. Final score, Yankees beat Toronto 7 to 4. Tiant was the winner. Edge was the loser. Gamble his 15th home run in the fourth with one on. Nairn his fourth home run in the fourth inning with two on. Gamble again in the 16th, eighth inning, nobody on. Jackson is 27th in the eighth with nobody on, and Cardi in the seventh with one on for Toronto. Final score, New York seven, Toronto four. And that soap opera at Yankee Stadium continues. Reggie Jackson quoted in a paper today saying, I love New York. I don't want to get traded. Last week, he wanted to get traded. Popped up. Thompson taking charge. 
makes the Ooh. play. Well, there's no sure catch in the outfield today. Not in that area with that wind, that high sky and sun. Minnesota four, Milwaukee one at the end of five. Erickson against Slate. Detroit, Boston rained out. Texas is at California. Kansas City's at Oakland. And tonight, Cleveland at Baltimore. Chicago at Seattle. National League, St. Louis, New York, a doubleheader. And tonight it's Montreal at Philadelphia, Twininer. Cincinnati's in Houston, San Francisco at Atlanta, and Los Angeles at San Diego. And congratulations to Bill Burton, got re signed through 1980, and what a job he's done. Boy, next week, be the finish of our regular season coverage. We don't know where we're going as Parker takes it high for ball one. Too much going on to be picking games right now. And if one of these divisions ends up in a tie, we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that game. Uh oh. Left field, well hit. Kingman, he's shading his eyes, fighting the wind, circling it, and makes the play. Now that ball Parker got a lot of, too, and the ball was a little bit higher. In fact, a lot higher than the ball Buckner hit. Buckner's was more of a line drive that went out. But Parker rounded first base. We look at Kingman making the catch, again, shielding his eyes from the sun. Parker kind of kicked the dirt. He thought that might have a chance. So there are two away. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Pittsburgh leading three to one. Curveball is outside, ball one. This could be an awful park to pitch in for a few months out of the year with the wind blowing out, or it could be a great park as it is today and yesterday with that wind blowing in, what, 20 miles an hour, you think? Oh, boy. Dead in at ball. least. It's really gusting. Foul ball out of play. One ball, one strike. You know, that's the, the thing about playing here, and I played here for two years. You always hear days when the wind is blowing out, when there's a lot of home runs hit. And then you get a day like today, you can hit some balls hard, and no way they're going out. Fouled out of play. Well, Bobby Mercer was here. I guess he took a survey over a couple of years, and he charted the wind, and he found out that the wind blows in, in a lot more here than it blows out. You get those summer months, I guess, with the wind from the south, with the wind blows out to left field. One two pitch. Struck him out. Tintro really has himself an easy inning. Three up and three now for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We go into the bottom of the eighth inning. It's Pittsburgh three and Chicago one. The Jesus Thompson and Bittner for the Cubs in the eighth. Ah, are you sold out of my Gillette Track 2 blades again? Never happened when I ran the store. Oh, these other twin blades will do. Hogswoggle. Gillette Track 2's Micro Smooth blades shave me better. But but these will fit your Track 2 handle. Handle schmandle. Gillette Track 2 shaves safer, smoother, and comfortable. But, Pa... Mm, guess I buy my Track 2 blades someplace else. Mm. To guys who use Gillette Track 2, no other blade will do. Well, at 5 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 to 6 Eastern Time, it's Sports World. We're going to have World Cup diving from the Woodlands Country Club near Houston. The Phil Box will be there, Greg Luganis, Melissa Briley. She's rated as one of the top Olympic hopefuls. And then we'll have USAC dirt car racing, 100-mile race from the one-mile dirt track at the DeCoin, Illinois Fairgrounds. Pancho Carter will be there. 78 to coin winner. And the runner up, Bill Vukovic from last year, will be there. And Gary Bettenhausen. All coming up on Sports World, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Big football day tomorrow. Boy, speaking of Olympic hopefuls, not very long now. NBC will be in Moscow to cover the Olympics. Way outside, the Jesus against the Colby. Kent to Colby. Ivan de Jesus. Quiet man who just goes out and does the job. One ball and one strike. After the sixth inning, the Twins lead 6-1 over the Brewers. Miles tip. It's one ball, two strikes. He's tough on a right-hand oh. batter. I tell you, you wouldn't have to look at statistics. Just look at Tacovi's cap, all the stars he's gotten from Stargell, and you know he's had some kind of a year. He has really been the stopper. He's been the cork. Hot smash, Foley, big hop, long throw, one out. Scott Thompson is the batter. One out, nobody on. Pittsburgh out in front, three to one. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. 
Thompson is 0 for 3. Bounced out Stargell to Keeson in the first. Line hard to the shortstop Foley in the fourth. And fouled out to Madlock in the sixth. To Covey, he just side wheels and underarms everybody. You're getting the view that the batter gets with that shot. Holy bobbles it. Baseball is violent even by veteran shortstops like Foley, and that just taking your eye off the ball for a split second. It looked like he stayed with it. It just went off the heel of his glove. It's just in there. Yeah. And now the tying run is at the plate. Bittner is the batter. He's one for three today. He's hit the ball hard twice. 3 1, Pittsburgh leading bottom of the eighth. Low ball one. That was only Foley's 15th there. Stars with the holes the runner, Scott Thompson, close. It's not very high for a shortstop. There's the premier, the king out there, who makes about five a year, it seems like, is Larry Boa. He never boots the ball. Well hit the right field. Parker coming in. One hand grab. Fires the first base, but it's not in time. Nice play by Nicosia, who I'll is backing it up. Parker's made about three nice catches on sinking line drives in this ball game. He made one in the corner earlier and one going to his right earlier. And that was a tough one. Hooking and sinking. Here he comes. The sun now is starting to shine in the eyes of the right fielder. It's been in the left and center fielders for a while. You see how that's affecting uh, Parker. He really cut that ball loose. Nikosha backed it up, and Dave Kingman is up there. He's a tying run. The fans are standing up along the left field line. They want to have him hit one out. Listen to him. something I said a while ago, there have been only five players in National League history who hit 50 or more home runs in a season. Ralph Kiner and Willie Mays, they did it twice. Hack Wilson, Johnny Mize, and George Foster. Wilson, of course, the record holder with 56. Kingman needs three more. Pittsburgh three, Cubs one, bottom of the eighth, tying runs at the plate, Dave Kingman. He's the guy who went up there, isn't he? Thompson is not getting a very big lead. Rojas, the first base coach, is telling him to stay close. There's no way you want to get picked off first base in this situation. That was your big man up there. It's to Colby against Kingman with Thompson at first, tying run. Two strikes. They bailed out a little on that, didn't he? Yes, he did. Here's going to be an interesting pitch. Will Tocobi go get him right here, one ball and two strikes? Or will he set him up for another curveball on the 2-2 two -two pitch? We'll see as Nikosha gives the sign. i got to believe Tocobi could try one pitch to try and go and get him to go after a bad pitch. You think he's going to go right after him? He, I don't think he'll try to throw a strike here. I, I don't think either. he'll go in the outside corner. I wouldn't go inside with him because he's bailing out. He may just pull it out of here. I'd make him just stay outside, miss it outside if I have to. He is outside. Colby made a good pitch, gets Kingman, that ends the eighth inning, so at the end of eight complete innings, Pittsburgh three, Chicago one, and for Pittsburgh in the ninth, it'll be Stargell, Madlock, 
and Nicosia for Pittsburgh. It's really hard to believe that this colorless cream will let me gradually get rid of just as much gray as I want. Grecian Formula 16, famous clear liquid and now new cream. It's colorless, easy to use as hair cream, no mess. Use a little every day. You're in complete control of just how much gray you slowly get rid of. Some of it, most of it, or all of it. Now I use it just once a week or so. It's a cinch to keep it this way, looking perfectly natural. Grecian Formula 16, famous liquid and now cream. There's something about an Aqua Velva man. My name is Kari Stremsky, and I've been playing Major League ball for a lot of years. I've seen a lot of ball players come and go, and lots of aftershaves, too. I've always liked Aqua Velva. Aqua Velva congratulates Carl on his 3,000th Major League hit. We're prouder than ever that Carl Yastrzemski is an Aqua Velva man. Try them all if you want to, but you'll find out. There really is something about an Aqua Velva man. Thursday on a special two-hour Buck Rogers. A sorcerer plots to conquer the earth. His weapon, an army of slave women. Gil Gerard is Buck Rogers, Thursday. Well, it's already the fourth week of the season for the NFL. And NBC, again, pretty good schedule as you look at it. It begins at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL 79. San Diego and New England. That looks like a beauty. All kinds of games. So check your local listings for the game in your area. Oakland and Kansas City, Seattle's at Denver. Like Saturday Night Baseball, be sure to check your listing because we don't know at this point. We won't know towards the end of the week where we're going to be. And then the playoffs. Starchel fouls it off, strike one. Starchel struck out in the first inning, fly to left in the fourth, and then single to center field in the sixth. Dick Tidro. That's fouled out of play. Cup bullpen is busy. Cottle is warming up for Chicago. Straight away, left center field. Scott Thompson coming over. And Kingman, look at this. That ball just blew away from Thompson and flew right into Kingman. And at the last minute, you could see Thompson go down. Well, Dave has been busy out there. You see Thompson now, whoops, he puts on the brakes, and he doesn't want to get hit by the big guy. Tony Kubek has made his way down towards the field. Do some interviews with the players after this game as we look at Bill Madlock. Hidro misses ball one. Madlock single and scored in the second line to the left and popped to the second base. One ball, one strike. As we look ahead in the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Buckner who has a home run, the only run for the Cubs. Buckner on Tavares and Foot. Three Cub batters. They trail by two. Two balls and a strike to count. He had a base hit in the second inning. 
Hogg off the glove of the pitcher Riley. Line hard to left in the fourth. And then hit into a double play in the sixth. One ball and one strike. Steve Nicosia playing today in place of Ed Odd, who's had a good year for Pittsburgh. There's the strike. One ball, two strikes. Four to one, four eight one for Pittsburgh. One run, four hits, and one error for the Cubs. Pulled on a left field line into the stands. Count remains at one ball and two strikes. Outside, two balls and two strikes. He's had a good year for a rookie, Nikosha, 289. Four home runs, 13 runs batted in. Outside, three and two, it's a full count. Tanner checking that lineup card. Wants to know who the pinch hitters are. Outside, so Nikosha draws the base on balls. He's on. And it brings up Garner. There's one out, one run in. Four to one is the score. St. Louis has jumped out with four runs in the top half of the first in that first game against the Mets. The Yankees beat Toronto 7-2. to Red Sox have been rained out. Texas did not score in the top of the first against California. Down the left field line. Shadows a factor here. See him down the left field line, just about getting the home plate, catching the umpire in the shade. One ball, one strike. The coach is on at first. Garner taking a good look at Lonette. They can put a play on with these two guys, Nikosha at first and Garner, who can handle that bat. Outside, two and one. So if they're going to put a play on, this would be the pitch. Here it is, manager's delight, two balls in one strike. Lonette holding. It's a strike. Two balls and two strikes. Homer for Texas, Nap for California, Kansas City, Dennis Leonard, Keel. Three and two curveball misses. Three balls, two strikes. One out. Tidro against Garner. There goes the runner. It's line foul. Out of play down the right field line. Well, it has been an exciting year for baseball. Boy, stop to think about it. Everybody, preseason favorites. Teams like the Dodgers, Yankees. They're out of it. There's a strike. Here's the throw. It is. They got him. The Jesus made the tag. And you see Pallone, the second base umpire, telling Nicosia, he got you right on top of the head. Foot got a strong throw off. De Jesus comes in front of the bag, and there's the tag. Dave Pallone, the second base umpire, right there. So it was a strikeout, throw him out, double play. We go to the bottom of the ninth, Pittsburgh four, Chicago one. Buckner on a Marison foot for the Cubs in the bottom of the ninth. With our great coverage, you're going to see something here. You don't really don't see the naked eye. De Jesus misses him right here, but watch him get him as he comes around now. Right there, that's where he gets him. He missed him the first time and then gets him on the back of the head. 
Joe, another thing I think you can see on that shot is the coach knew he was a dead duck, so what he did is he wasn't trying to avoid the tag. He was trying to roll, roll over or roll under De Jesus and maybe knock him over and dislodge the ball. He was dead and he knew it. So here is Buckner now. Those infielders are just so agile, I'll tell you that. <laughs> We don't say that when I'm upstairs. <laughs> when I leave. <laughs> Buckner, who had a home run in the seventh inning. Only run for the Cubs so far. He's hit the ball hard twice. The home run, he lined hard to right and the fourth. Ball one. To Colby in relief of Eason. balls and no strikes. Taking a look down at the first base coach, Cookie Rojas. Certainly want to wish his young son, Bobby, a speedy recovery. Cookie left the ball club. Son had surgery. Turn Kansas. There's a strike. Cookie, one of the more popular guys. There you see him. Daddy's back. Bobby's doing all right. Everything is great. Bill Buckner. Bouncing ball, Stargell has it. Takes it himself, and there's one away. So Buckner is out. Stargell unassisted, brings up Onaveras. Hit into a double play in the second, walked in the fourth, and bounced out second to first in the seventh. Could Colby coming in to nail it down for Keeson. is playing in close for Ontiveros. There's the strike. That's the Covey. He's got stars all over that hat, hasn't he? We saw the front view and you barely get to see it. The back now. That's a good shot. Low inside as he submarines it. Look at those stars. I think that just since the All-Star game, too, Joe, I think Stargell took him all away and said, now we start all over again the second half. <laughs> Bouncing ball. Gardner flips to Stargell. There's two easy outs. To Culley with that sinker. Two ground balls, two up, two down. And here is Barry Foote. It's all up to him to keep it going. Four to one. Pittsburgh leading. Pittsburgh had lost three in a row. They had won 18 out of 23. Oh, big, big ball game. Bouncing ball. This could be it. Garner has it. There's the throw in time. So three ground balls, three up, three down for the Chicago Cubs. That ends the ball game. And the Pittsburgh Pirates defeat the Chicago Cubs by the score of 4-1. to one. The winner is Keeson, 11-7. Saved to Colby, 29. Losers, Riley, 0-1. The Pirates are now a half game behind. Montreal's won 91, lost 59. Pittsburgh, 92-61. and 61. Of course, Montreal plays a twiniter tonight. Pirates snap a three-game losing streak and now have won 19 of the last 27. A big win for these Pittsburgh Pirates against the Chicago Cubs as they really go for that division title. Four to one, Pittsburgh over the Cubs from Wrigley Field this afternoon. What a game. Promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United's building the largest airline in the world around you. Fly the friendly skies. NBC's Game of the Week has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. See the mileage makers at your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And by Aqua Velva, the cool, refreshing aftershave. Yes, there's something about an Aqua Velva man. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station.
five guys and the girl who drove them wild. Follow them through three decades of loving and lying. First it was Rich Man, Poor Man, and now the world premiere of The Last Convertible, Monday. The many faces of drama this fall. Jack Klugman, Joe Don Baker, Eric Estrada and Larry Wilcox, Gil Gerard, Kate Mulgrew, William Devane, James Garner, Greg Evigan, Robert Conrad, Michael Landon, and the rest of the NBC family. See why we're... NBC proud as a peacock. Well, the Pittsburgh Pirates defeat the Chicago Cubs this afternoon. A big, big win. All big wins. A 4-1 to one, a score to Colby. I tell you, when you look at this Pittsburgh club, you can just see the importance of that bullpen. Keeson gave him a, some strong pitching, but then the bullpen came in, and that was it. Once to Colby came in, he seemed to just nail it right on down. We'd like to pay tribute to the young Riley. I thought he did a pretty good job. Uh, Herman Franks just wanted three tough innings. He got more than that from him, but these Pittsburgh Pirates did win the ball game four to one. And Tony Kubek is on the field right now, but before we send it down to him, I do want to remind you that at five o'clock Eastern time, Sports World will be coming on. We'll have the diving and we'll have the USAC dirt car racing. So Sports World will be coming up. But right now, Tony is on the field. He's got, uh, I think, Kent Tacovey like to find out just how many stars he's got Tony and if it did come after the all-star game he's gonna have to get himself a bigger hat won't he Tone? <laughs> all right Joe well Joe asked the first question if you didn't hear it he wants to know how many stars you got and have them all been since the all-star game or that's the beginning of the year no these uh mine are all from the whole year uh I see I've got uh 29 saves and 10 wins so I got 39 stars well I got 40 actually you, got, you count got, the one today don't you I got one up here this one on the top it's a special one. It's in a special spot because that's the one I got for playing left field in San Francisco a couple weeks ago. During a game? Yeah, I went out. Uh, we made a move, brought Jackson in to pitch to Darrell Evans, and I went to left field for one batter because Ivy was the next hitter, and as it turned out it was, we got Evans out for the last out of the game. He hit a fly ball to me. Kent, you know that uh, a guy coming out of the bullpen like you or Suter to name just a two in this ballpark today, you never have an easy outing. Every time you come in there, it's a, usually a close ball game. What kind of things are you thinking about in the bullpen, and how do you prepare yourself? Well, basically, you know, at this time of year, there's a few more considerations than normal, and it's not really revolving around the pennant race. The game, you know, is still going to be played basically the same way. The same situations are going to come up. But the thing that really sort of messes up a relief pitcher is you got about three or four guys on each club that are new that you don't know anything about. These guys that have come up from double-A and triple-A ball that might come in in a situation and pinch it against you. I know when I got ready to go out for the ninth inning today, I checked with Chuck on there was a couple of guys on their roster that I didn't know. He pulled the book out and sort of gave me a little bit of an idea if they came up to hit what to do. But uh, as far as the game itself goes, you know, it's still the same game. You got the same situations. And during the game, you don't have time to think about the pennant race. You got to think about the situation itself and worry about the pennant race after the game's over. When you came over a while ago, before we started this interview, you said, and the first word you said, well, I got the ground ball back. And it was almost with a sigh of relief. What did you mean by that? Well, I've been having a little bit of trouble the last time out. I've been getting by, and I've been getting people out, but uh, I've been getting a lot of fly ball outs. And as you know, that's not my style of pitching. My style is to keep the ball on the ground. And uh, I was just making some mistakes. I was having a little problem with my slider. I wasn't getting it out over the plate where I wanted it, and my sinker was up a little bit. So today, uh, when I was warming up, I was concentrating on a couple of things, trying to make an adjustment to get the ball back down. And I was fortunate enough, I got it back down today. And Wrigley Field's the best place in the world to get the ball back down, because I guess friendly confines are no fun. You know, talking to Tanner yesterday, I, I posed the question to him. I said, you know, if you had to pick an MVP, uh, who would you pick? He said, well, a lot of guys on this ball club. He said, but to be honest with you, I'd say the three guys in the bullpen, to Calvi, Romo and Jackson. You've been in, what, 238 or nine ball games, which is extraordinary for a, a trio of relievers. Well, I'll tell you what's really funny is that um, three years ago when Rich Gossage was with us, Gossage and I both that same year set a new club record of 72 appearances in a season. Uh, and that was just, you know, a mere three years ago as long as the Pirates had been in existence. This year, we're going to have three guys that are going to go over 72. I've already got my, uh, I got 89 now. Romo's got 80. And Jackson's got 70 already, so he's going to get at least two or three more before the year's over. So we're going to have three guys break a record that stood for a long time before three years ago. So our bullpen's been busy. Two more quick questions. First, have you ever gone to Chuck Tan and said, Chuck, I can't go today. My arm's too tired. Uh, we had it come up for the first time in my career. It came up once this year in New York. I developed a knot uh, in my shoulder early in the season. And it was from, uh, I was struggling at the beginning of the year and wasn't throwing the ball well. 
I had a little problem. I had to go to him and take one day off. That's the only time I've ever had to do that. One more quick question. Who's going to win the Cy Young Award in the National League? I got to vote for Bruce Suter. The man is just amazing. Uh, the, you know, the year that he's having, he's going to probably break the major league record for saves in a season. He's he already got the National League record tied, and uh, I can't say enough. You know, I'm a little partial toward relief pitchers, but I really, uh, really envious of the kind of year he's having. Well, I'll tell you, relief pitchers have changed the game more than anything I've seen in the last lot of years, and you're going to get a few votes for that award yourself. Thanks again, Take. Okay, thank you very much. We'll Tony. see you again. Let's go now back to Joe Garagiola upstairs. Okay, Tony. Well, when they talk about the changes in baseball, there are three things they always talk about. You heard of relief pitching. Everybody's become a specialist. The slider and then hair dryers in the clubhouse. That's probably the biggest changes that has occurred in baseball. The Pittsburgh Pirates right now are a half game out of first place, obviously, depending on the outcome of the twinite doubleheader that the Montreal Expos and the Philadelphia Phillies will be playing. Those Expos, when they just play one game, it almost seems like an off day. Houston... Well, they're playing Cincinnati again. They had quite a ball game last night. It went 13 innings. Here are some of the highlights from that game from Houston from last night. Power against power. James Rodney Richard versus Tom Seaver. In the second inning, Richard hung his 92-mile-an-hour slider, and Ray Knight lined it over the wall. Cincinnati 2, Houston nothing. The Astros came back in the third. Terry Poole singled to center, scoring J.R. Richard, and the Astros trailed by one. It stayed that way until the seventh, when Poole came through again, knocking Tom Seaver's first pitch into right center. Rafael Landestoy scored, and the game was tied. In the meantime, J.R. Richard was throwing smoke. He pitched 11 innings, threw 143 pitches, and struck out 15. The key play came in the 13th. With runners on first and second and one out, the Astros' Enos Cabell just beat the throw to avoid the double play. Reds manager John McNamara argued and argued, but lost. Cincinnati intentionally walked the next batter to load the bases. Up stepped catcher Bruce Bochy. He smashed the first pitch off Tom Hume, and the game was over. Houston 3, Cincinnati 2 in 13 innings. Jerry Ower for NBC Sports in Houston. Boy, you don't think they weren't happy about that ball game. The Houston Astros, I tell you, Bill Verdon, who just got re-signed through 1980, what a tremendous year they've had. Everybody wonders how they've done it. It's almost like three singles in a hurricane to score a run, but whatever it takes, they've been doing it. They're hanging right in there, and they go against Cincinnati tonight. Once again, if you're just joining us, the Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the Cubs by the score of 4-1, to one, and the Montreal Expos and the Phillies will be playing tonight. Now, the manager, Mr. Optimist, or Mr. Optimism, whichever you want to call it. Chuck Tanner is down here with Tony. Tony, ask him how he feels. Maybe he's got heartburn or something. He always <laughs> feels so great. No, I'm going to ask him to say, we've got a monitor down here, Joe. We were watching you do that little sum up right there. I'm going to ask him to say to you what he just said to me before he had the microphone. What did you say when you said that? I said one thing, no matter how optimistic I am, Joe won't get more hair. Oh, yeah, well, you said something like that. You don't have heartburn or anything, Joe, once in a while. You don't ever worry. Everything's just fine and dandy every day. Well, we have good players that play hard every day, and they try hard, and they give 100%, and that's all you can ask, and we're a good ball club, Tony. We talked when uh, uh, Mike Bale came in the on-deck circle. Right. We just discussed this uh, before, and you said you might not give me an answer, but I'm going to hit you with it anyway. Fine. Why did you not wait till Herman Franks announced Mike Bale? Well, I did that deliberately. Uh, I wanted to make the move first and then let him make the decision on what he wanted to use. And I'll tell you at the end of the year why I did that. I don't want to tell I, I would rather not say it right now. But there was you a played them a few more times. Yes, sir. And they're a good ball club. All right. Your bullpen has been extraordinary. We talked to Tacovi. Rome has been done so well. And Jackson's done so well. That's been a big part of the success of this ball club. That's been our success. So Jackson, Tacovi, and Romo. I can't say enough about the three of them. And then Dave Roberts joined us. And... He's contributed, so the four men in the bullpen have been, they have been the men who have been instrumental for over 80% of our victories. Chuck, thank you so much. We've got to leave right now. And I'll tell you what, Montreal's in an extraordinary year, and you have to, and whichever way it turns out, we're going to try and be there with you. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate Thanks to Chuck Tanner. Let's go upstairs back to Joe Gargiola. Okay, Tony, coming up next on Sports World, we're going to have diving and the USAC dirt car race, but we're going to give you a preview of the women's three-meter championship diving right now. Here it is. This is Mike Adamley along with Mickey King Hogue at the FINA World Cup Diving Championships at Woodlands, Texas. Both springboard competitions, women's and the men's, which you'll see later, are run in tournament fashion. In other words, head-to-head -head eliminations. 
And the two women in the finals, Janet Nutter, you see her right here from Canada, versus Valerie McFarlane from Australia. Janet, 26 years old. Her first dive that we'll see is a double twister, 2.4 degree difficulty, not too bad for Janet. She's holding up very well in this head-to-head -head competition. Scores, seven, six, She's getting six, sevens and six sixes on it, Mike. Six. The award Take a look at it here in the replay. She'll get herself set up in the hurdle and she'll come right at us in a somersault action with the Valerie twist McMillan coming McMillan as she pirouettes and now pikes down and stretches for the finish. Janet score 44.4. Valerie McFarlane, 18 years old from Australia. And to get to these finals, she defeated Suzanne Vetteskog of Sweden. Valerie's a really tough little woman. She's not very tall, but she's strong. And this inward two and one half somersault we're gonna see will prove it. It's a 2.6 degree difficulty and she knows how to spin it. Good dive. I saw her do it in practice. I knew she could do it in the meet. Two and a half tuck. The replay will show just how the action going inward works. She's standing backward, but dives toward the board. The tuck position is 